everybody i am super excited to share another video using my gel plate and my distress oxide inks so i just got done filming the video and it ended up being twice as long as i had anticipated so i wanted to do a little intro before i get into the video that this video will be a little bit longer than uh normal so if you do not like longer videos you can click off this and i will have links down below to the other two videos that i have which are way shorter i believe they're between 10 to 15 minutes long sharing basically the same techniques just different color combinations uh, also i wanted to share that scrapbook.com is having a card making sale and all of tim holt's products are on sale as well i believe card making sale is 20 to 50 percent off and tim holt's products is 20 percent off the sale ends february 24th and i wanted to just to let you guys know because i will be putting this video up in the time frame of that sale so if you want any of the supplies that i am using they will be on sale so be sure to pick them up while they um, are a little bit discounted all right like i said this video is a little bit longer but i hope you stick with me and if you do like this video please give it a thumbs up don't forget to leave me a comment down below i love reading them and if you are new to my channel i hope you subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time that i upload a video also, I have all of my social media links down below as well as all of the supplies in this video. All right, let's get started. Hey everybody, I am back with my gel plate and a lot of different color combinations to try out. I asked on my previous videos what color combinations you guys liked and everybody kept telling me to go to Christina Werner's color combinations, which is where I got mine um, to begin with but I wanted to go over there and see what other co color combinations really uh, captured my eye so I decided to pull some together uh, and I also have some stencils Let's see just I grabbed just a few I have a couple different ideas we'll see if it turns out um, but I also have some stamps so I have some foam stamps here and then some other stamps that I thought might be fun to try out. These are just kind of random. I kind of quickly uh, looked through all of my stamps and my stencils just to kind of pick a few because, to be honest, just the ink alone on the gel plate is just amazing to me. I love just a little bit of texture you get and the subtleness of the colors when you are ink blending with a blending brush, uh, like a makeup brush or something, um, that's a totally different look than if you want it on the gel plate. So I have also some things like some string. So I, uh, like I was saying, I have some string. I also have like this, um, I don't know what this would be called, but I'm just going to do some scribbling on the ink. Uh, you can use a the back of like a paintbrush or something. Also, some of this drywall tape stuff, and then some corrugated cardboard. Uh, you can use bubble wrap. You can use all sorts of different things. Uh, you don't always have to use uh, stamps and stencils and things like that. You can get texture from even a paper towel. So I am actually going to take one of these. So I don't know if you could see here, but this these paper towels have a really cool texture on them actually. So I'm going to try and see uh, what I can come up with. All right, so the main thing I think is just having everything set out how you want it because when you are kind of in the groove, or at least for me when I'm like in the groove, I just wanna go. So I need, um, I have a towel here I have some baby wipes. I have my big brayer, which I only use for uh, inks. I don't use paint on this because the paint will dry and then um, it's a little bit difficult to take off. So I would suggest having two separate brayers if you like to do acrylic paints or any other different mediums on your uh, gel plate that might stick to the, the brayer. Yep. <laughs> It's kind of weird having two cameras there. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll learn and I'll get used to it. All right, I also have a big stack of regular cardstock panels. So these are measured at four and a quarter by five and a half. You can do full sheets, you can do printer paper, you can do 
uh, what, what else do people use? Tissue paper, uh, all sorts of different things. I'm just using these because I want to eventually make some cards with them. So sometimes we want to just create but not a full project. We feel crafty, we feel like we want to create something or you know, get in our craft room, but we don't know what to create. So this is a good way just to kind of get those creative juices flowing and maybe inspire you to create a full project, especially maybe if you're in a creative rut, uh, just doing something, just little bits here and there, something like uh, mono printing, gel printing, it's called a bunch of different names, uh, you know, might eventually spiral, spiral in a bigger, like a full project. All right, the first one I want to try is I'm going to do Abandoned Coral, Tattered Rose, and Seedless Preserves. And I can't remember, I think it's like this. So, all right, let's just get going here. And again, all of these color combinations are from Christina Werner. So uh, over on Pinterest, you can check them out. And over on her website, I believe, too. All right. I don't know if you guys can hear that plane. Like a little, little plane somewhere. All right, so this is Tattered Rose that I'm using now. The one before was Abandoned Coral, and the one before that was Seedless seedless preserves and they are beautiful colors all right so i have my berea here have my paper here and i want to make sure that i am all set up because i'm gonna get some more uh baby wipes here okay so i'm going to start on this end because i want to blend to the dark darker part or the darker ink instead of going the dark to light I want to go the light to dark and then go back up this way so it's nice and blended okay and remember that you have a lot of ink on the your brayer so don't I mean I like to go back in and add it back to the gel plate so keep that in mind that you still have a lot of ink on there all right, so do, 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 do. I want to try this. So I'm going to stamp these circles onto the gel plate and see what happens. I'm excited. Okay. And I think that when you do your inks this way, like ink blending this way, it saves a lot of ink and a lot of time. I mean, that took no time at all. So, all right, I'm just gonna lift this up. And I think I got it. All right, let's see. All right, we're going to lay this down just right here and see what happens. You wanna make sure that you get in all of the corners and then just go over. I'm not laying a paper on top because I don't want to get all of that extra ink on the sides. I just want to, uh, I want to keep that on the gel plate for later. Okay, so let's see. <gasps> Look how pretty. That is so cool because you get a lot of that little texture in the uh, the print here, which is really cool, in my opinion. If you don't like this look, uh, you know, then it's probably not going to be for you. It's a little bit more, um, I don't know how to say it. It's definitely more grungy look. It's not perfect, you know, a perfect ink blend. So this would be really great um, as a background for a card. I actually did something similar where I did the ink blending, I believe with probably the similar colors because I'm trying to think of the card, but I stamped the, the circle stamp with um, Versamark ink and then used white embossing powder to get the same look. So easier, quicker, 
All right, so I'm gonna go back in. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more ink here. All right, and let's see, let's try, I liked using the stamp, so let's try this one here. I'm gonna use the leaves and um, create a background that way. So I'm gonna use the uh, outer outlined leaves here. So remember that I am doing my prints sideways so that I can get it all in the video. So you could do it this way, um, but I'm doing it this way. And let's see, so you can stamp it multiple times. I'm not using a stamp block just because I kind of want that little, little bit of a grungy look. I don't want it to be perfect. So I'm going to pull this up. And then maybe add a little bit up here. And then remember, the ink is going to be on that stamp. So just keep that in mind. You might get a little bit darker area up here because I stamped down here. So when I come up to the lighter area, you I might get a little bit darker um, image there. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to take the little one now. And just get here. This probably isn't going to be perfect, uh, but it, you know, I'm hoping that this can spark some uh, ideas in your mind and then we can um, hopefully you share them so that we can all see and then um, kind of, I guess, piggyback off of each other for ideas. Uh, I think it's a lot of fun when, you know, somebody shares a video and then somebody says, oh, that, you know, inspired me to do this. And then I always get inspired by um, people that are inspired by me. <laughs> it's kind of, it's good because it goes full circle. All right, let's see if I can try to get this pretty good here. I'm trying to remember where I put the stamps. All right, let's see how it looks. That looks so cool. I love that. And the grunginess of the speckles, whatever. It's probably some little strings, maybe a cat hair, to be honest. Uh, my cat is in here often. So I don't think there's any cat hair. But there's like little speckles of probably the baby wipe or something. So I think it looks really cool. So you could see that this one, of course, is a little bit darker. This one is a little bit lighter uh, and a little bit like up here. This one's a little bit more pink. This one is beginning to be not as um, it's almost like one color like this one. You could see the gradation of the different colors. This one is looks like more of like one color gradation, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to add more color back to the plate here and this time we'll use a stencil okay so I'm going to use a stencil this time I'm going to use a stencil from Simon Says Stamps all of the supplies will be listed down below uh, as well all right so I'm going to use a stencil from Simon Says Stamp I really love this stencil so I'm going to place it a little bit more up to the right here which would be the top uh, only because I have more darker than I do light and I'm going to take a piece of paper it's getting messy on my desk here that's okay all right then I'm going to take a brayer and very carefully use it to make sure that the paper is getting all of that ink up and you don't want to go too fast uh, because then you'll move your your paper or your stencil and you might not get a very good image here we'll see how this works all right <clears throat> that is so cool i love that see that super super cool and then you can take this off 
and then get another print out of it. Just like that. I love that because you have the very subtle pink in the background. Ooh, I love these. All right, so you can actually even get more color onto your gel plate, uh, but I am going to move on to a different color combination or this video will be five hours long. All right, so I am going to clean up my gel plate by just adding some paper to the gel plate and you could see I just picked up that color there and you can just continue to add the color because you don't want to waste any uh, and I'm doing this quite quickly so that I'm actually going to blend this out a little bit better here so that I can move on to a different color combination and I'm actually going to go, no. So these would be really good just for maybe using with a, uh, like dyes or uh, something like that, or just a really cool background. See how you get that really cool texture right there? Let's see if it'll focus. I, I absolutely love that. All right, so I have now Festive Berries, Worn Lipstick, and Scattered Straw. So I am going to do this color combination and see what happens. I'm excited. I love the color combinations Christina Werner has. All right, now we're going to move this way. So we're gonna blend the yellow and then back up just a little bit. You get a really nice blend when you um, take the time to kind of blend it from one side to the other and then from the other side, like back and forth. All right, so as you could see, I have a lot of ink on here left. All right. All right, so I have these uh, stamps from Carabelle Studio and I absolutely love them. Although I didn't realize that they were for gel printing, uh, I really liked this, this image here. And I was kind of bummed when I realized if I use this as a regular stamp, if I added the ink and then stamped it, all of the text would come up backwards. So it's opposite of a regular stamp because the idea is you stamp it onto your gel plate, it becomes backwards on the gel plate, then when you pull up the print, that and then it makes it the right way again. Um, so I wanna use this because it's an, it's an amazing uh, stamp. I absolutely love it. All right, so we are going to, where is my other, okay. I'm going to make sure that the stamp gets in there, picks up a lot of that color. Okay. Now, All right, let's see, because I had stamped a different stamp on here before. <gasps> oh, look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. Love that. Okay. So we're gonna go back in, and I'm actually gonna add a little bit more of that scattered straw, because I think the pink really um, just kind of hides it. So I'm just going to go in again with my colors here. I think it was just a little bit more festive berries and then worn lipstick. Because 
I really want to get a lot of that yellow. Just super pretty, the yellow and the pink together. Okay, I keep using stamps and stencils. I will definitely get to using uh, more random things in just a second, but I wanted to try this out where I use a uh, like an image stamp where like a butterfly or a flower and see how it turns out. So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to do it this way. So again, I want a, I want more of that yellow. So I'm going to position it up a little bit and very carefully lay it down. Hopefully that all got down into that ink. Pull that up and let's see what happens here. I think this is going to be really pretty if it works out. So with a stamp like this, I would basically color it with zig markers, most likely or watercolors. So, so doing something different with the with the stamps is great too because then you get multiple uses out of your products and your supplies. Look at how subtle and pretty that is. I don't know if you guys can see that. I hope you guys can see that. So, so pretty. I love this color combination. Okay, I am going to take just a print with just the color. I'm going to put it down here. Okay. Look at how pretty that is. So pretty. All right, then I'm going to put the color back down. Remember, we have a lot of that ink left on the brayer. Okay, next I am going to take some string and just going to randomly put it on here. Just like so. More random, I think. And we're going to take okay. I'm going to put the paper down and let's see what happens. I might have added a little bit too much string, but we'll see what happens. You really want to be careful because you don't want to move the paper. You want it to stay where it is, of course. All right, let's see what happens here. Ah, look at that. That's so cool. And it's so different. All right, so I love that. So you just have regular string and just kind of plop it down on your gel plate and you get a really cool print that way. A lot of these techniques can be used with uh, acrylic paint as well. Uh, you just have to be careful when using stamps with acrylic paint and stencils because you really want to make sure that you're cleaning it up, cleaning up your supplies really fast because acrylic paint will dry fairly quickly on to your, um, your uh, stamps and your stencils. All right, so I'm going to go in with sponge sugar. Picked raspberry. And wilted violet. So this is like a different variation of kind of the same as the dust or seedless preserves 
abandoned coral and tattered rose so it goes from a darker purple to a lighter pink uh, just a different color combination this one is going to be really really pretty all right i'm going to just pull up the color first I think this one is going to be super gorgeous. I should have put it up a little bit more, but that's okay. Oh, okay. So when this happens, see how I don't have all of um, the ink on there? I'm just going to go in approximately where that was and lightly press where the color is and now I have color on that little area this one's super pretty okay so I am going to add a little bit of blue and gray to this all of this pink <laughs> it's like a lot of pink and purple for me so I am going to let's see how, how I want to do this probably blue to the gray to yeah all right I don't know if this is a regular color combination. I kind of just picked a few colors that I thought would go good together and we'll see how it goes. All right, I did not dry this completely. So we'll see what happens here. I think when you have lighter colors, you wanna get a little bit extra ink onto the gel plate because the darker color will overpower the um, I think I probably should have done this one over here. We'll see how it turns out. All right, so I'm just going to pull up the ink first. See what we're working with here i think i should have done the weathered wood next to the faded jeans so we'll see oh no that is super pretty i love that okay so i'm gonna put back down the color And I am going to add a little bit more up here because again, the darker color overpowers the lighter colors. So I don't want that. I want a, that gray to show through. So I'm actually going to brayer off some of this color on my So with me just using the color on the brayer, look what you get. I love that. I think it looks super cool. But I wanted to make sure that I didn't have too much dark blue on here when I blend this color back through here. Okay. So let's use this stamp here again. I'm going to use this stamp again from Simon Says Stamp. It's called Round and Round Background. And I'm just going to place that down here. Okay. And grab the paper here. love that look at that super super cool and i had cleaned off my stamp so it was a little bit wet probably from the baby wipes so it kind of bled a little bit there i love that i think it looks really cool 
All right, I'm going to add that color back here. Let's take this Catherine Cooler uh, stencil here. And I'm gonna do something different this time. I'm going to lay the stencil down and then I'm gonna take the brayer and brayer on that stencil. I'm going to pick that up and then add the paper. Hopefully I got it where I put the stencil. All right. Look at how cool that background is. Love that. All right, that is another look at different color combinations and different techniques you can use on the gel plate with the Distress Oxide inks. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it, pin it, uh, email it to a friend, however you want to share this information with everybody else. I really, truly appreciate it. Also, leave me a comment down below. I love reading them, and I always read every single comment. I may not get back to every single comment, Co person that comments, but uh, I actually do read every single one of them. So I want to thank you guys again for stopping by and spending so much time with me today, and I will catch you guys later. Bye! I think I have something on my face. I think I see it in the corner of my eye. Let me see. We good, we good. All right.